can go. Uh, you can go right now and uh, learn more about the program. On that, uh, on that website is an eligibility quiz. So uh, the law is real specific about what businesses uh, we're trying to get this money to. And the, the highlights of it are for businesses with 50 or less employees, including uh, sole proprietors, where they're not really an employee. They just they form their own business and they're a one-person shop. Uh, that, that is a qualifying small business. It has to be a Louisiana domiciled business. You have to have filed tax returns in either 2018 or 2019, or if you're a newly formed business in 2020, you would then be asked, uh, uh, you, you're eligible still for the program as long as you say you're, you, you're intent to file uh, uh, for your 2020 taxes. So we have uh, those basic uh, tenets for being eligible. We also have um, uh, the question about what is recoverable. Uh, this is not a revenue replacement program. This is a cost recovery program. So any expenses that are COVID related that your business incurred from the period March 1st through today or whenever you apply for this grant will be reimbursable. So obviously things like uh, cleaning costs, uh, expenses like uh, disinfecting uh, masks, gloves, social distancing measures, signage. If you're a business that had to uh, do curbside, make modifications to your operations to, to, to serve your customers outside, drive-throughs, tents, you know, tables and chairs, anything outside, uh, that is all reimbursable. In addition, we've uh, expanded it to cover your normal operating expenses. So if you're a business who, uh, like most businesses, have rent and utilities, payroll, insurance costs, all of these costs continue through the, the period of, of COVID. So you can claim and get reimbursed for 100% uh, of reimbursement for your rent, your payroll costs, uh, utilities, insurance expenses, and so forth uh, of your business location um, as long as you're declaring that it was affected by COVID. Meaning if your business was disrupted, and, and we can hardly think of of any businesses that, that didn't feel disruption, especially small businesses here in Louisiana. So the treasurer uh, likes to tell folks that, you know, 53% of the folks that are employed in Louisiana work for small businesses. And those folks, um, uh, you know, there, there is obvious economic harm and, and impairment being done right now by, by COVID and this, Although we wish it was more money, with $275 million is the pot of money that's, um, that's available. And you know, we've, we've developed an online application that opens up on Tuesday, July 28th for those businesses that want to apply. So next Tuesday, uh, it'd be really smart to get on that website and make application for these grant monies. It's a grant, not a loan. And um, you simply go through, it's a, about a 12 step uh, website process where you're answering questions and uploading copies of your receipts or copies of your tax returns uh, so that we can uh, review your claim and, and pay you. The maximum is $15,000 uh, is the most we can give any one business. And the law also provides for uh, some equity, meaning uh, if your business did not apply for or receive, I'm sorry, let me restate that. If your business did not receive any help from the federal government in the form of PPP, that's Payroll Protection Program, or EIDL, that's the SBA's Economic <laughs> Impact, uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, uh, if you didn't receive any money from the, the federal government, the first 21 days of this program, meaning starting on July 28th for the next 21 days, we'll only look at applications where those applicants said we didn't get any help from the federal government. So those folks have first bite at the apple, so to speak. After that, we have um, 
from from that day forward, day 22 forward, we'll be looking at anybody uh, who applies, whether they got help or not from the federal government. Also, there's a carve out of that $275 million, it's $40 million or reserved for women owned business, minority owned businesses and veteran owned businesses. So if you declare in your application that you are a woman owned business of meaning 50% or more of the business is owned by a woman or minority uh, or a veteran, then your application will be given preference and uh, you'll be uh, monies for those will come out of the full $40 million reserve. If we expend the full $40 million we'll con and there's other monies available in the main pot, we'll still continue to pay uh, grants uh, associated with uh, with that. So we're just trying to make sure at minimum $40 million goes to women, veteran, and minority-owned businesses. So uh, I think that's about it. Uh, Avery, did I miss anything? Avery Hall is the uh, assistant director for the program. She's with me today. I uh, know. I think you covered everything. Um, as you guys can see, the um, the picture on the screen is just additional information. That's our website, and that's the call center. So if you have any questions about um, how to apply or exactly what you need, just give a call to them. And then the treasurer's main um, office number is on there. So feel free to call his office if you have any questions. But I just got word that the treasurer has joined us. Um, Treasurer, can you hear us? Are you able to to start? We might be having technical difficulties. If not, um, David, whenever you're ready to open up the floor for questions, we can get going. I'm here, Avery. Good. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I'm I'm actually at my business office today, and I always have a little technical difficulties uh, getting onto these Zoom calls, but. Um, Glad we could come on and, and share what's going on. Um, this is gonna happen pretty quick. I, I do wanna just add a couple of things. I, I've been listening to David's presentation. Um, it's very important to understand um, uh, that this is a reimbursement program. And a lot of discussions about lost revenue and a lot of questions uh, revolve around, hey, can, can, I, can I claim this or claim that? Um, this, this is a, a program from the CARES Act uh, federal program where you're going to have to prove your expenses. You're going to have to submit your invoices just like you would when you're doing, when you file your taxes or you give you ta your taxes to your CPA. There will be CPAs, accountants uh, processing these claims. The legis Louisiana Legislative Auditor is charged with um, doing the auditing on the backside. And they're going to be looking for all these things. So uh, I tell people, you know, today is, I, I don't even know what today is, July 24th. You have a few days to get prepared um, to, to gather your documents, scan them, get them put into your computer, and, and be prepared. We do expect a lot of people to, to um, claim, to, you know, to make claims. And we, we know we're going to have more claims than we have money. So it's really going to come down to who has the documentation, uh, who can get on the application and complete it, and and get in line for payment. Um, I am excited as as your treasurer to to have this program in our department. I give a lot of credit to the legislature um, for realizing how how bad business is suffering right now, and this is just a band aid. And and but I as I tell people. Some aid is better than no aid. So we expect this money to go quick. Um, and um, you know, I strongly encourage you to get prepared and, and, and get ready to roll. You can go to that website. I'm sure they, I, I see it up on the screen. Um, and you can take a little quiz. I'm sure David mentioned all that uh, and get yourself ready. If you have any questions at all, please call um, one of those numbers. Call the call center. If you call my office and if you want to speak to me directly, you tell them that. They will send me a text message. Give me your cell phone number. I stay on the phone all night long talking to people. So 
if you want to, if, if you have some questions, I don't mind walking through it and, and giving you those answers. So with that, we can um, open up for any questions that y'all might have. We do have several questions in the chat room. Um, the first, the first one that seems to be popular is what time will the application be available? Yeah, so the, the, app, the application will be available on July 28th. Do you know what time in the morning it will be available? Well, I'm not telling people the time. Okay. But, thought, but you, can, you can, it's available on July 28th. July 28th starts at a certain time. So you can sort of figure that out, I, I, I believe. Okay. Um, no, seriously. July 28th starts at a certain time. The new day starts at a certain time every night, right? Yes, that, that, I think that answers the question. Okay. Um, my, consultant, my consultants don't like when I tell people that, but I can't lie. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it starts on July 28th. Um, Carolyn Cooper is asking, how will they assess payroll expenses for solo practitioners? So um, payroll expenses um, are allowed, even for self providers. You have to prove it. I mean, you just can't say, hey, uh, I had this amount. You'll have to show your documentation. Um, but if you can document any expenses between March 1st and the date that you um, actually apply for the grant, um, we'll be eligible for reimbursement. And David could add if, if I left anything out on that. Yeah, that's a good technical question. Um, there is a, we have found a method for to help those small businesses where the sole, there is no true payroll cost because the, 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 sole, the sole practitioning sole proprietor doesn't actually issue payroll to themselves. Instead, they, they take draws and probably they haven't been taking draws out of their business because the business has been suffering. We have come up with a formula uh, for that person to, to, to have like substitute or alternative payroll. It is a hourly rate um, and I can, um, we're gonna have that posted on our FAQs uh, on, the, on the website. Uh, so look for an FAQ on LouisianaMainStreet.com that talks about that specific thing. It's a way to, for us to compute some kind of associated payroll with that sole practitioner. Right. So let me just uh, sort of add some more info about that and, and, our, and our thought process that we've had to go through. So this is a reimbursement program. So you have to be able to, you have to be able to show your receipts or you have to be able to show your documents. So the sole proprietor, which which I am also uh, in my private life, I don't get paid to the end of year with a K-1 or, or, or you just however you, you take your money at the end of the year. So we're, we're using some national figures to, to at least let the sole proprietors claim that amount. And these are national numbers, averages. So, and, and we'll be able to use that in, uh, as I back up data. Um, and as I said last night in a meeting, we had to work to satisfy the legislative order because the legislative order is following the law to the T. So we've had to figure out how to um, create a program and make sure we follow each letter of the law. So that's, we had to get creative to do that. It took us several weeks to come up with that. So the sole proprietors um, will be able to claim some, some type of, of pay. Okay, we have, um... We, we actually have quite a few questions, y'all, so just uh, bear with us. Um, <clears throat> can nonprofit high schools apply if they are owned by a minority corporation? No. Um, nonprofits are not eligible at all. This, this program is geared, that's why it's called the Main Street uh, Recovery Grant Program. It is geared towards mom and pop brick and mortar businesses. Okay. Um, will this grant count as taxable income? No. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try to give you short answers to get through your question. 
Uh, Carly Sherman would like to know, will, will the money be awarded on a first come first served basis? As in, if I apply on day one, am I more likely to get awarded than if I apply later? Yes. Okay. Um, upon receipt of a complete application, how long does it take to review the application and receive the grant money? If your application is complete, meaning that all your documentation, uh, all your documentation is there, you've answered all the questions, and there's no back and forth between the accountants and you, um, you should get your application in and a check in your mailbox, I would say within 30 days. Okay. Um, this one, I think you sort of addressed this, but it, it did come up again. What documentation is acceptable for solo payroll? And does a copy of a check for an employee count as proof of payroll? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if they are 1099 or contract workers and taxes haven't been filed yet. Okay, so, so 1099 folks are basically self-employed. That does not count as payroll. So, I mean, technically those 1099s don't work for you. So you, you can't claim those, but those 1099 folks uh, typically have their own business. So they, they're they eligible um, to, to do that on their own. For instance, let me just give you some examples. Uh, we're in a construction business. Uh, we 1099, 1099 all our subcontractors. Well, they're all those subcontractors, they're either sole proprietors, have their own LLCs. I mean, it's rare we write a check to an individual, but I did yesterday. Uh, you know, I had a guy doing some brickwork for me, he's a brick mason. Um, you know, he um, he fit, filled out all the information, but he, he files his taxes as an individual. So, um, so, you know, we've worked real hard, as David said a minute ago, to make sure those types of uh, folks can, can um, qualify. Uh, that was very important to, to the legislature. Okay. Um, Christy Wood asks, if a business did receive a PPP loan and they wanted to apply for this grant, would they apply for expense reimbursement beyond what was covered by PPP between March 1st and the application date? Yes, we should let her do the seminars. That, that's exactly what. <laughs> um, hold on, y'all. My, my, uh, fixing to lose my laptop. My, um, yes. Um, what, what, what will happen is um, if, if you have received any um, aid, then, then you can apply and you can apply on the, on the first day. <laughs> that will be set aside to day 22. And whatever expenses you claim uh, and, and, and are rewarded, they reduce whatever you have received already. You got to be real careful, though, to make sure that you don't try to claim the same expenses twice. You can't double dip. You need to make sure that what you claimed early on for PPP or whatever aid that you received, um, that you don't submit the same paperwork um, to to this program because they'll you won't be you won't qualify for it. All your expenses, in addition to what you've already received, is all eligible. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here's what I think I heard you say this already, but do you have to be a brick and mortar? No, we sort of use brick and mortar as a, as a term, um, uh, but you do have to have a fiscal location. So, I've, you know, as your treasurer, so, some things I've had to make a decision on. I've been, I've taken the opportunity to be a little more liberal when it comes to what's your fiscal location. You know, I've, I've deemed um, if you own a food truck and you travel around a city in New Orleans uh, selling food during the day, well, that's your physical location um, and that's eligible. Um, if you have your, run your business out of your home, when we've been on a, with real estate agents and other uh, sole proprietor type uh, contractors or other 1099 type of businesses who a lot operate out of their home. And as long as you have customers or employees come to that location, 
and it's and or it's or you don't have to have both if, if you operate some kind of business and your employees come to your house where your business is located then that's a qualify then you qualify so brick and mortar we just saw to talk use that term but we really mean do you have a fiscal location where you operate your business from okay um <clears throat> I think, uh, let's see here, there's, <laughs> I'm losing track of them. Um, is there a drop down box for purpose of the grant or do we write an essay? I'm not sure what that, in the. There, there's an application, when you go on to our webpage, um, it's an entire application process. It's not an essay at all, it's fill in the blank. Um, it, it will it will guide you right through it. I saw it work last night for the first time. We did a test, and it just walks you right through line for line. You know, um, um, so it, it's it's pretty detailed. But I think I think most people will get it. If you if you do have a problem, there's a one eight hundred number that you can pick up and call somebody and talk through. But um, but it, you should be able to get through it. Okay, and, and further to that note, can I include any money spent on my accountant or a consultant to assist me with my application in my request? Um, yes, you can. The problem you're gonna run into is the timing uh, because you have to show your invoices. Um, so the chances of you using your accountant when the application goes live on the 28th, um, that's, that's, I, don't, I don't know how you're gonna do that. But what you could do um, you can get with your accountant today, how he or she can help you get all your invoices straight, what's eligible, what's not. I have been on the phone twice now for webinars with CPAs across Louisiana. I think the first call we had was about 220, and this week was about 150, 160. So we have been on, we've been in contact with a lot of accountants and CPAs. So what I would do is before um, July 28th, which means you, you have till Monday to get to do this, is uh, get with the accountant, determine what receipts that you think are eligible. If you think they are, submit them. Let, let, let the accountant to review your claim tell you no. I'd rather you submit them and be told no, then, then not, and they could possibly be eligible. If there's any question at all, submit the invoices. But you see, your accountant invoice um, is eligible as long as, it's, as long as you can show an invoice uh, for the expense. Okay. Um, are y'all able to do direct deposit? No, you will get a check from the Department of Treasury. Okay. Are there some examples of types of businesses that could apply that was not deemed as having economic impact by the PPP or SBA EIDL? Well, there's some examples of the types of businesses that could apply. Um, just about, and I, I'm not familiar with PPP um, or, or any of the federal programs. I, I did not participate in any of them. So I, I can't tell you how any of that kind of stuff worked. That's all a federal program. All I can tell you is for Louisiana and, and, and understand the process, what has happened. So $1.8 billion came down from the feds and dropped into the treasury's checking account one night with little um, discretion on, I mean, little um, uh, direction on how to spend it. So the legislature, um, passed a law creating some guidance on how we could spend this $275 million grant. In, the, in, in their guidelines, they instructed that it would be a brick and mortar or fiscal location kind of business. Um, CARES Act law, the federal law describes what that can be, meaning it's, it's not a loss of revenue. It can only be a reimbursements for expenses. So you, when you take their laws and the state's law and combine them, 
just about any business that you can almost come up with is eligible. It, it, if it's a business and it has a fiscal location where employees or customers can go, you're eligible. So there's, there's not too many. Um, I, I guess some web-based businesses are not going to be eligible. The other major thing to think about is were they impacted by COVID? Were you impacted by the, the government shutdown? Well, other than the Winn-Dixie where I shop at, I don't know any business that wasn't impacted in some negative capacity. So my ruling is every business is eligible. And I bet you Winn-Dixie could argue that, that they were impacted, although they would have to convince me of that, but they wouldn't even qualify because it's, it's 50 employees or less. So we've talked about this a lot. I think just about every business you can think of as long as they have customers and, and employees that visit a location will be eligible for this grant program. Okay. Um, will the frequently asked questions response posted online address, what documentation is required for single member businesses? For example, I simply complete a draft from my business account to my personal checking account. What documentation should I prepare? Can you tell me what kind of business you have? Um, she did not say. Um, Allison, maybe post something further. Um, here's another one. Uh, I make earrings and accessories. How do I apply if I pay cash to employees? Well, let's, let's sort of go back to the beginning. In order to have to, to, to qualify for this grant, um, you have to pay, have filed a tax return. You have to have legitimate business. You had to have a file tax return, which picks up sole proprietors because some sole proprietors do not have a technically registered business in the state of Louisiana, but they, they operate and, and file on their personal taxes. Um, you have to have a location where people come or, or your employees um, and the, or you have to have um, under 50 employees to, to be qualified as a small business. So that's, that's the basis of whether you qualify. And then were you impacted by COVID and do you have COVID related expenses? So just, and, and I'm just trying to understand the question, um, just because you have a business and you operate and some weren't impacted. Um, and, or won't be able to prove they were impacted by some invoice. Your inventory is not, not a um, related expense. That's, that's, you, you can't get reimbursed for inventory. You can only be reimbursed for expenses that are related to um, your business being impacted negatively. So what are some of those examples, I guess would be a better way for me to put it. Your rent. So if you make earrings and and whatever, and you have a bit, you have a location, and you're paying rent, well, your rent is eligible, your insurance is eligible, your payroll is eligible. If you're paying your, your employees cash, you're not gonna be able to prove that. You have to be able to show, document your claim. If you cannot document your claim, then you cannot, you will not be reimbursed. Um, so if you're running a cash business, um, this, we won't be able to help you because you're going to have to show and document what you're asking for. And as you do that, then, then it will qualify and you can get reimbursed. That's a long answer, but hopefully that answers some other questions. Yes, I think it does. Um, to the previous question from Allison um, for the single member business, and she just drafts a uh, from uh, she just completes a draft from her business account to her personal checking account. You had asked what business she was in. She's a psychologist. Okay, so I guess you're getting back to what um, David talked about earlier on how sole proprietors would claim their payroll. So the, the, uh, I believe that's your question. So the, the team, the consultants, the accountant company has come up with a method with help of the, the legislative auditor some national numbers that, um, and David could probably explain this better than me, that gives us some guidelines because you have no proof really. Um, 
David, you want to help me on this one? Yeah. So if that's if that psychologist was to regularly draw, let's say a thousand dollars out of her, maybe her LLC that she practices of, into her personal checking account, and that was a a pre-COVID um, practice and maybe a, a post-COVID practice, um, then and there was evidence by looking at bank statements, seeing those transactions, you could call that a, 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 a payroll type expense and make a claim for, uh, for that, that thousand dollars. If, if another company said, I'm going to wait and once a year, take money out of my LLC and bring it into my personal checking account. Then I would say, uh, since that transaction hasn't happened yet, uh, you would have to do, opt for this calculation of uh, substitute payroll that I spoke of earlier. So I hope that answered the question for the psychologist. I hope so. Um, what are the yeah, dates for the Let me add just a little bit more, Paul, because there's a lot of sole proprietors. A lot. That, that there's going to be plenty. So those of us that take a paycheck monthly, they're going to have some records. Like David just said, I, I never even thought about that. They will have a track record. But though, there's some, like my wife and I, we don't take it to the end of the year. So we have no documentation. So that's when it will go to this formula-based. Um, you know, we tried to come up with something that, we could, that could be a matter of fact. And the, and the auditor came up with an idea to, to use, I guess, a national figure or maybe state figure. For, for, for different kinds of um, professions that we can allocate on an hourly basis. So um, that, that meant we didn't have to just tell you no, uh, because you have to have documentation. Without documentation, we can't, we can't pay it. So for all you sole proprietors out there or, or small business people who, um, who pay yourself weekly or monthly, you'll be able to show that that documentation, that will help you. But if you don't have that, um, I don't want you to, um, you know, don't believe, um, still apply and, and they'll use that that metric to, to get you some money. Because and look, let me just say this too. My goal is to get you the money. And, and when, when, when I tell my team, if, the, if, if it's gray, we're gonna err on your side. It, if it's if it's not if it's black or white and it's it's very easy to pick a side then we'll do that but if it's gray I'm going to err on your side um, uh, as as I keep saying I, I want to get rid of all the red tape I can't get rid of all the tape I tell them that the tape at the treasury we use clear tape we don't use red tape I, like I knew y'all like that I've seen a few smiles. <laughs> um. Uh, Okay, this is a straightforward one. What are the dates for the receipts again? Starts on March 1st. Okay. So it's March 1st to the day you actually apply. The only, the only, um, there are some, some examples that we're just not going to get in the weeds on. For instance, let's just say your rent. And I don't think we've talked about rent yet, and I can't believe nobody's asked about that. But rents are an allowable expense. And if let's say, say you apply on July 28th, there's a couple of days left in July, we're going to allow for the whole month of, of, of July. I think we're doing the same thing for the month of March too, huh, David? Yeah, so if you, you know, um, if your the COVID really didn't um, start or, or some, some restrictions didn't start till mid-March, but we're starting it on March 1st. So your rents would be, your eligible rents would be for March, April, May, May, June, and July. I also want to um, add in that if you uh, rent space, and this has been a big issue to the mayor of New Orleans. And um, in fact, we're having a press conference Monday. Um, if you, let's just say, didn't pay your rent in March and April, let's say you didn't pay your rent in March, April or May, but you paid your rent in June and July, or vice versa. Let's say you paid your rent in March, April, and May, but you haven't been able to afford to pay it in June or July. 
we have ruled that you owe that money, you've incurred that debt, and we're gonna allow you to claim it. So you'll be eligible for five months of rent, whether you paid it already or you will be paying it. Um, and that's the only area where you can get away with um, claiming it without actually having paid it. You're gonna have to show your lease. Um, uh, you either show your, your some, some uh, landlords do um, invoices, some don't. You can do invoices, you can do um, um, cancel checks, or you can submit your lease. So I, I wanted to just mention that. I see somebody like that uh, also. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, so Allison's asking specifically rent dates when the rent check was cashed, meaning her January rent check was cashed March 9th. January rent is not, caught, is not eligible. Okay. Yeah, March rent is. Um, how are we uploading documents to the application? Do we need one master file or uploading multiple documents? even up to 30 different documents. I'll let the technical yeah. guy. It's going to be uh, multiple documents. So uh, one of the things we're going to ask for uh, to prove your residency is your copy of your driver's license, for example. So go ahead and get that uh, in a JPEG or a PDF type form and have it ready to go in your computer as well as all of the other uh, documents. We prefer PDF is the file format type. And instead of having one jamungus PDF with, you know, 35 pages, we would prefer uh, 30 different PDFs, each, each one being specific to the type of expense you're asking for. So let me be a little more clear on that. If we're talking about you're claiming your rent and you have uh, a copy of your lease and a copy of uh, some of your canceled checks and you've got uh, like uh, like the treasurer was saying, June and July, you haven't paid yet. Um, just just handwrite, haven't paid June and July, but I incurred it. That could be all on one PDF. That could be a six-page PDF. That's okay. Um, but when you come to utilities, for example, and when I say utilities, I mean electricity, water, uh, gas, uh, internet, television, telephone, all of that's utilities in our uh, try and try to claim all of those expenses for reimbursement during the period your business was interrupted by COVID. That actually was another question. What percent of utilities can be claimed if your business is run out of your home? Um, out of your home is going to be difficult because then we'll get into the, to the whole argument about what's personal versus business. We're saying for brick and mortar commercial businesses, you know, with a street address and, and so forth, all of those utilities, as I just discussed, are, are covered. At home, it's just too hard for us to, and we don't want to get in an adversarial conversation with folks about their Cox cable bill and how much of it should be uh, business or personal. So I would say none, none of that. Um, there is, however, a, a pretty cool option that we're offering called the quick relief so when you get into the application next week, uh, there's an option for you to say, you know, I would rather just uh, have you guys do all the math for me. Now we're going to limit those quick relief grants to 5,000 bucks. But if you upload your 2019, and if you don't have that yet, because you haven't filed it, your 2018 tax return for your business, or if you're self-employed, your Schedule C uh, portion of your tax return, that's for Schedule C is for business uh, income and loss. Uh, once we see that Schedule C, we'll be able to, to see um, your business uh, and what it typically ran with revenue and expenses. And we'll do the math for you and go ahead and cut your, uh, uh, or initiate an award or offer you an award amount up to $5,000 based upon your, your, your historic last year's or the year before's uh, business expenses. So we don't really care that much about your business revenue. We really care about your business expenses and that's what we'll be paying attention to to compute for the period uh, from March through 
the day you apply, that's, that's what we're focused on. Okay. I think this one's an easy one. Um, <clears throat> are you able to take the eligibility quiz before the application date? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of the things we talked about last night too is taking the, um, the taking a test before you start on the application because if you pass the quiz um it's only six questions if you pass that quiz then we believe you, you, you're probably going to be eligible um application wise so everybody i think um dave this is something we talked about last night um you'll take that quiz if you may have done it already but I think you'll take it again before you actually start the application process. Um, <clears throat> can we reapply again if we incur more expenses later if we receive a grant? Yes, you can, but I'm just gonna tell you frankly that we expect to be overwhelmed uh, with the amount of applications. If you've seen these other programs that the state has had to try to help different sectors uh, I mean, they, they blow up, um, you know, the last one they did had, a, I think a hundred thousand more applications than they had money. So what, what I, what I try to tell people is try to claim everything again to get to 15,000 because you can't get more than 15,000 anyway, but you can, you can do an amendment to your application later on. I just don't know if the money's going to be there now. I will tell you this though, I believe the $40 million set aside for 60 days. So let's say you submit on day one that you, that you fall into the category of a minority woman or veteran owned business and you apply on day one, but day 30, um, you had some other expenses. You'll be able to, to do a, a supplemental uh, application and it's possible on, in that pot. I think the big pot um, uh, is going to disappear very quickly. Uh, I think if, if you fall into the, that minority category, you might have a shot. But um, I wouldn't count on that. I would get everything together uh, because I think, you, I think most people are only going to get one shot. Okay. I, I know you've mentioned this before, but um, somebody asked again, and I know it, this crowd, it applies a lot. Does this apply to nonprofit organizations or a museum? Nonprofits are not eligible at all. This is strictly for business, businesses. Now, there are some religious businesses that could uh, be eligible, like bookstores and Christian music stores or whatever. I'm trying to find one example. I live on a North Shore, and I used to be one that would that I think would be eligible, but nonprofits are not. Okay. Um, this one's a little detailed. Um, what about a small physical brick and mortar business that was fully in operation prior to March 1st, 2020, but underwent a change in ownership and was purchased after March 1st, 2020 by an entity that was formed after March 1st. The business has been in operation for over five years and will file a tax return and has COVID related expenses, receipts, rent, payroll, cleaning expenses, et cetera. Okay, you have, have to, you would have had to be in business. Um, David, help me with this. I think it's January 1, 2020. Um, you'd have to be in business um, and, and, and only receipts starting on March 1st would be eligible. Is that yeah. correct? David? Let me, I think I understand because there was a, a business sale. Right. In, in the middle of all this stuff. It was so an existing business. Yeah. So an existing business was operating and then was acquired or there was a change of ownership on March 1st. Is that correct? After March 1st. After March 1st. And the new owners? Yes, they, um, there will be a tax return um, but it underwent a change in ownership was purchased after March 1st. And he also notices, uh, the business is minority owned as well. Okay. So the ownership, the ownership changed occurred after March 1st. So I think the, 
the new ownership um, would be applying on behalf of the business. The previous owners would probably not be able to right. apply. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Can you be reimbursed for a purchase of a laptop and printer to work from home as a contract accountant? Um, previously, I used a client's computer. You know, I've, I've told people when it comes to equipment, um, yes, certain things are, um, are reimbursable. You know, if you went out and bought a Mac Daddy of the computer systems and it costs you three thousand dollars, and you're trying to claim all of that. We're not going to allow that. Um, but it, reasonable expenses for equipment, uh, you know, will be reimbursed. Okay. But um, if you, but if you, uh, you, if you just happen to upgrade your equipment last month, and you're going to uh, in your office, and you spent ten thousand dollars on it, and you're trying to claim that as a COVID expense, that's probably not going to fly. Got it. Um, could the Main Street award for expenses if your EIDL was more than 15,000 or only if you received less than 15,000 from PPP or EIDL? Yes, yeah, we, we're going to deduct or offset your, your grant amount. So let's say you're a business and you've got good documentation for $45,000 worth of uh, COVID related expenses, primarily in payroll, rent, utilities, and, uh, and clean, obviously, you know, clean and disinfecting and personal protective uh, stuff. So $45,000 in, in, in total claims, and you have evidence that you've gotten, let's say, $25,000 in grant money, either via ED, EIDL or PPP, either one, we, it doesn't matter to us. We're simply gonna take your 45,000, agree with it, deduct 25,000, which would leave $20,000 in unreimbursed COVID related costs. And we're gonna max, you would then be maxed out at $15,000 from our program. And you would get a, hopefully an award for 15,000. Just, just does my math make sense? Yes, I think so. There was also another question sort of regarding the same thing. Is there a priority for people who receive PPP 50,000 versus EIDL loans of 1,000? No, any, we're looking at it as any federal aid that you've received, whether it's a $1,000 EIDL advance loan or $100,000 in PPP uh, loans. Uh, all of it's considered federal aid, and we're going to defer your application till that 22nd day. And then again, anything that you receive from the feds beyond what you claim, we're going to deduct or offset that. Okay, so um, Ron Brothers, another pretty specific question. If I have a transportation business and was working out in West Texas as an owner operator driving my truck, I was impacted by COVID-19, would my business be concerned? I had to be shut down for lack of work for my employees and me. Um, I haven't had receipts since I've been shut down. How do I handle that? Well, the, the, is, is the t a business located here in Louisiana? He lives in West Texas. Um, is, is if the business is domiciled and registered in Louisiana, um, you have to have a location. Um, so if you live in West Texas, uh, I, I guess my question to you would be, do you have an office? How, how do you operate your business? Um, and then you'd have to prove that your expenses, that you have some expense. If you meet all the business qualifications, then what expenses would you have? Um, uh, you'd have to give me some examples. Okay. Um, Look, and let me just let me just say this: um, anybody can apply, um, and and I would if 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 um, you go through the process, um, and then when the accountants get to it, they'll be, they'll, they'll get you on the phone or via email, or whatever, and they'll either qualify you or not. But if if um, I tell people, go ahead and apply. 
The worst thing they can do is tell you no. Right. Um, this one, I think, is an important one. Should we submit all eligible expenses and then the Treasury will offset based on PPP, or should we submit only those expenses that are not covered, claimed in the PPP application? My, my personal opinion, um, file, you know, submit things that you weren't reimbursed for already. It, it'll just save everybody some, some headache and some grief of comparing this, that, and the other, you know what you received already. Um, you know, so set those aside and, and submit everything else. I mean, most people received the PPP money months ago, you know, so you've had a lot of expenses since that time. So it's very easy to separate and, um, and submit everything you have, but don't submit things that you've already been reimbursed for. But I mean, if you got 50,000 additional expenses, submit them all. I wouldn't stop at 15 because if they if the accountants rule well this isn't an eligible expense and you're only going to get 10 and then you're still holding another 20, uh, submit it, submit everything. Okay, um, we're coming up on 11 o'clock, and I certainly want to be respectful of your time. Um, <clears throat> if uh, we do have a few questions unanswered, but um, I know obviously the information for. Um, questions and uh, is on the screen. Um, Let, let's let's do this. So whose whose program are we running on? Is it ours or yours? It's ours. Okay, so let's do this. I, I have another webinar at eleven, and mm -hmm. I know Avery does well as well. I can leave David on with you, um, unless he says he can't. Um, he he could probably finish up those questions before yeah. he leaves up. I can do that if if that's helpful to you, Kristen. Sure, that'll work. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave y'all. I have to be in um in Seaport in about five minutes uh, from my office in Covington, Louisiana. I'm glad God created Zoom. And um, again, if I could be any of help to you, um, that that's my office line on there. You call, uh, leave your cell number, and I will call you personally. And I don't mind doing it. I'll do it all weekend. Um, um, or you can shoot us an email. With that, I appreciate um, y'all's participation and we look forward to kicking this thing off on Tuesday. Thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And Avery, thank you as well. I know you have to sign off. Thank you, have a good day. You too. Okay, I'm gonna try and push through these questions pretty quickly, David. <laughs> so, okay, so. all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, requiring the eligibility for unsold inventory is the proof for the supplies I spent money on that has yet to be sold. Yeah, we're going to stay away from inventory. Um, it's just don't don't bother telling us about um, inventory because it's too hard to account for. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, yes. Did he say that inventory does not count as expense? And I think that's... <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um, we're not going to recognize that because, you know, you bought t-shirts for the Jazz Fest and, you know, now they're, you couldn't sell them. Um, it's so hard for us to put a value on, on that, that uh, we've just decided to be more liberal in other areas of the program to, uh, to try and make it up that way. Mm -hmm. Um, this one, my husband and I are partners. Should we provide full tax documents for 2018 and 2019 or just the Schedule C? We were able to pay some 1099 staff for the summer staff for four weeks during COVID. Okay, so great question. Um, so 2019 is better than 2018. Um, so don't bother sending us your 2018 taxes. If you have done your 2019 taxes, we're looking on your, we're gonna look for your form 1040 for 2019 and your schedule C that goes along with that. If you happen to be in the realty business, you know, you're, it's a schedule E I believe for rental income and expenses as a, and, 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 um, as a substitute or an alternative rather for schedule C. Okay, um, just. Uh... Oh, and back to the other question. So they had 1099 costs, labor costs. Mm -hmm. They um, have cancel checks. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and claim those. Um, just ex 
you know, express how it was COVID related and that you had these costs, these labor costs, and we're going to try and reimburse you for them. Okay. Um, a quick last one. As far as payroll expenses, is that gross payroll or net payroll? And can we include payroll taxes paid by employer? Yes, uh, gross and include uh, your benefits, your taxes, your workers' comp insurance, uh, the entirety of your payroll. Terrific. Okay, I think we've actually worked through all the questions. That's awesome. awesome. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, for uh, junior leaguers, um, take a screenshot and email, <clears throat> pardon me, to info at jlno.org um, to get credit. Um, and I think, oh, there's one last one. <laughs> what if you don't have a tax return for your business? I started my business in 2020. Okay, the law, the law says if you started it between January 1st and before March 1st, then that's okay. We're still, and you incurred, obviously, COVID-related uh, expenses. Just declare that. Tell us you don't have a tax return because you're a new business, and um, we're going to deal with you as best we can to get you your fair share of the grant money. Terrific. If, if you started your business March 1st or after, sorry, we can't help you. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yep. Um, all right. I think that's it for us. Um, thank you so, so much for sticking around, David, and finishing out those questions with us. I'm glad to help. Love your, your organization. You know, you'll do some great things for our city and uh, keep up the good work. Terrific. Kristen, any last words? Um, Nancy, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for, um, for fielding all the questions and emceeing the program and um, to you and Katie for getting us organized. Um, we were thrilled to be able to facilitate this and um, hats off to y'all because you got it done um, in a really short time frame. So thank y'all. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Okay. All righty. Bye. Bye. Bye.